up. Takeoffs and landings are preferably performed face to the wind to reduce the distances and ease the control of the airplane. However, due to the configuration of the runways and to meteorological conditions, there may sometimes be crosswind. For certification, the regulations require the demonstration of a minimum crosswind. The figure is rather low and would not allow the airplane to be operated in all usual weather conditions. The crosswind demonstrated by the manufacturers is well above this minimum. 30 to 40 knots are common values for transport aircraft. To be approved for operations, it is also required that no exceptional skill be needed to take off and to land with the crosswind demonstrated by the manufacturer. On transport airplanes, the approach with crosswind is flown wings level and with a heading different from the runway in order to keep the track exactly aligned with the runway axis. It is called a crabbed technique. In order to maintain the main gear on the center line, the aircraft cockpit and therefore the pilot's eyes need to be upwind. Just before touchdown, at the end of the flare, a partial decrab is performed with the rudder in order to reduce the angle between the aircraft fuselage and the runway axis. 70, 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, 5. The difficulty is to synchronize the decrab and the touchdown. It should not be performed too early, as otherwise the airplane would drift out of the center line due to the wind. 30, 20, retard, 4. If the decrab is late and not sufficient, there are large side forces on the gear and the tires at touchdown. While the landing gear is not specifically designed for such a maneuver, there is no risk of damaging it as other sizing maneuvers are so severe that it is recognized that they cover such a crab landing. 50, 40, 30. In case of late decrab, it is also more difficult to maintain the runway axis until the nose wheel is on the ground due to the remaining crab angle. After touchdown, the spoilers deploy, which increases the weight on the wheels. When, in addition, the nose wheel touches down, the lateral control becomes easier with the rudder and the nose wheel steering. At takeoff, due to the dihedral of the wing, the wind may lift up the upwind wing. Therefore, there could be some bank on the opposite side of the wind. This bank angle depends on the weight the configuration, the amount of fuel in the wings, and on the characteristics of the landing gears. V1. Usually, the manufacturers recommend not using the roll command to reduce this bank angle, because the extension of spoilers creates some drag and reduces performance. As the airplane accelerates during the takeoff roll, this bank angle increases because there is more lift on the wings, thereby reducing the vertical forces on the gears. A solution adopted on the A380 and A350 is to have an automatic deflection of the ailerons without spoilers during the takeoff roll phase to compensate for any significant bank angle. The crosswind creates a distortion in the air intake. At takeoff, with high thrust and strong crosswind, there is a risk of abnormal engine behavior, such as an engine stall or abnormal vibrations on the fan blades. These phenomena are identified during flight tests 
and it may be a limiting factor for the maximum crosswind in operations. The wind varies permanently during the short final phase and the flare. The value associated with each test landing is computed thanks to all recorded data with specific algorithms in order to obtain a wind speed at 10 meters above the ground. According to the regulations, the demonstrated crosswind value is generally not a limitation. And in operations, a crew can take off or land with a stronger crosswind if necessary. However, most airlines use it as a limitation. A good analysis of the weather situation is necessary, as sometimes it takes several hours to reach the test airport. The airports commonly used by Airbus over the last years were Brest, Shannon and Keflavik. The key challenge for crosswind tests is to be at the right place at the right time.